In this example, we have given a beam cross-section which is shown in the figure below, which is subjected to an internal shear force V of 25 kN, and we are asked to determine the shear stress at point A in this beam, in the web, which is this part, and in the flange, which is this part. To determine the shear stress, we will need to use the formula which we have learnt in the lesson, which is tau equals to VQ over IT. We will start by determining the shear force V. As we will recall from the example, the beam cross-section is subjected to an internal shear force of 25 kN, therefore V is 25 kN. Now we will move on to calculating the moment of inertia I. To determine the moment of inertia, we will first need to determine the central location, which is also the location of the neutral axis, and we will call this Y-bar. Since this beam cross-section is symmetric, Y-bar will lie exactly in the center of the beam cross-section, so Y-bar will be 300 mm divided by 2. And this will give us 150 mm. Since we now know y bar, we can move on to calculating i. We will be using the formula i is equal to the sum of 1 over 12 bh cubed plus ab squared. We will notice that this beam cross section can be divided into three parts, which are 1, 2, and 3. Since this beam cross section has been divided into three parts, we can rewrite this equation for i as. Now, substituting the dimensions we can see in the figure into this new equation, we will have Computing this, I will give us 1.8636 times 10 to the power of 8 millimeters to the power of 4. We will now move on to calculating Q. We will remember that the formula for Q is Y bar prime A prime. And to calculate Q in this example, we'll need to consider the area either above or below A. Calculating Q considering the area above A, which we'll call Q above, the Y bar prime that we'll be using to calculate Q will be the distance between the neutral axis of the section above A and the neutral axis of the entire beam cross section. So that will give us 150 minus 10. And A prime is the area of the section above A, and that will be 200 times 20. Computing this, Q above will give us 560,000 millimeters cubed. We can also calculate Q using the area below A, which we'll call Q below.
We will notice that this area below A can be divided into two portions. 1 and 2. Since the portion below A has been divided into two components, we can rewrite the equation for Q as Upon observation, we will notice that the neutral axis of the section 1 of the area below A lies in exactly the same place as the neutral axis of the entire beam cross section. Therefore, y bar prime 1 will give us 0, which will mean that this part of the equation will be equal to 0. So we have q below, and y bar prime 2 will be the distance between the neutral axis of the section 2 of the portion below A and the neutral axis of the entire beam cross section. So that will give us 290 minus 150. And A prime 2 will be the area of section 2 of the portion below A, and that will be 200 times 20. Computing this, Q below will also give us 560,000 millimeters cubed. We can see that calculating Q using the area either above or below A will give us the same value. Therefore, we can see that Q will be 560,000 millimeters cubed. Now we'll move on to calculating thickness T. Since we're asked to calculate the shear stress at A in both the web and the flange, we'll need to determine the thickness of both the web and the flange. So starting with the thickness of the web, which we'll call T-web, from the figure we'll see that T-web is 20 millimeters. And we also need the thickness of the flange, which we'll call T-flange. And we can see from the figure that T flange is 200 millimeters. We will now recall the formula that we stated at the beginning of this example, which is tau is equal to VQ over IT. We're first asked to determine the shear stress at point A in the beam in the web, which we'll call tau web. And we can rewrite the formula for tau web as and substituting the corresponding properties of this beam that we have calculated into this equation, we will have Computing this, tau web will give us 3.76 megapascals. We're also asked to determine the shear stress at point A in the beam in the flange, which we'll call tau flange. And we can rewrite the formula for tau flange as And substituting the corresponding properties of this beam cross-section that we have calculated into this equation, we will have Computing this, tau flange will give us 0 0.376 megapascals. Using the shear stresses that we have just calculated, we can make a sketch of the shear stress distribution of this beam cross-section. We'll need to remember that this beam cross-section is symmetric, therefore whatever happens on one side will also be reflected on the other side. The shear stress at a free end is zero, and the maximum shear stress will occur at the neutral axis. Now making a sketch of this distribution, we'll have
This sketch gives us an idea of what the actual shear stress distribution of this beam cross-section will look like. And we'll notice, as we have discussed in the lesson, that there is a jump between the shear stresses at the web flange interface.